right. I'm going to wait for a few to get in. All right. All right, brothers and sisters, we are live. I want to make sure you all can see and hear me well. If you can see and hear me in the chat, just let me know. If everything is good on your end, let me know. Shabbat Shalom to all, to all our viewers, right, worldwide. When you come in, right, just make sure you hit that like button in the chat. Right, hit that like button, drive the traffic in. Let's make sure, brothers and sisters, people know we're live. Right, we're live here from the Philadelphia Church here at HQ. If you don't know, brothers and sisters, I'm Bishop Amoth. This is Officer Yatabia Allah. And we will be here giving you another weekly installment of your Sabbath lesson. Brothers and sisters, if you've seen the announcement on Friday, you know that Elder Ricard is getting some well-needed and deserved rest, right? So we're going to uplift him. He's all fine. Everything is good, but he needed that rest. Elder Lloyd is traveling, so I'm stepping in on behalf of the elders. So greetings, brothers and sisters worldwide. Shabbat Shalom. We're going to get into this lesson, right? First, we're going to start with our prayer in the Hebrew credo, and then we're going to go straight into today's lesson, a deep topic, brothers and sisters, in the world, but not of it, right? Yatab, if you could, please open us up in prayer so we can start this particular service. All right, sisters, have your heads covered, and brothers, please have your heads uncovered. Ahaya. Bahashim Yeshaya, Rawawak, Kodash, our Father, our Father, who art in heaven, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, thy will be done, on earth, on earth, as it is in heaven, as it is in heaven, give us this day, give us this day, our daily bread, our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors, as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not to temptation, and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from all evil, but deliver us from all evil, for thine is the kingdom, for thine is the kingdom, and the power. And the power. And the glory. And the glory. Forever. Forever. And ever. And ever. Aman. Aman. Shemai. Shemai. Yasha Allah. Yasha Allah. Ahaya. Ahaya. Allah Hayanawa. Allah Hayanawa. Ahaya. Ahaya. Achad. Achad. Hear, O Israel. Hear, O Israel. The Lord our God. The Lord our God. Is one Lord. Is one Lord. Aman. Aman. All praises. That's right. Let's get a most high some praise worldwide in the church right i would like to make a quick announcement brothers and sisters obviously not this sunday but next sunday brothers and sisters we're going into a new hebrew and bible academy right that's it yes yes get your morning dose right enroll at historytimes.org brothers and sisters make sure you get your seat in for this academy new groundbreaking lessons prophetic breakdowns and i'm gonna tell you in the in the in lieu of this solar eclipse and everything you see and all the the so-called signs that you may see in the earth you really want to tap into that news that elder shaprat is going to bring brothers and sisters Get into the Hebrew and Bible Academy. Please don't wait to the last minute. The administrators work very hard to bring you the academy. So make sure, brothers and sisters, you get into the Hebrew and Bible Academy, brothers and sisters. I'm telling you, you'll learn more in the academy than you probably did your entire life in the modern Christian church. Get into Hebrew and Bible Academy, brothers and sisters. As the commercial says, you're invited, right? All right. So we're going to start this lesson, brothers and sisters, a profound lesson, right, in the world, but not of it. 
Now, most of us, brothers and sisters, when we come into this truth, you know, we, we get joy. It feels good. Okay. Everything is brand new. But then to a certain point, brothers and sisters, we have to learn how to adjust. Okay. We have to learn how to actually bear with the truth. And that means dealing with others. Okay. That means dealing with family that may or may not be in the truth. Right. So this particular lesson, brothers and sisters, is going to be a step by step guide on how to operate within the truth. Right. OK. How do we interact with our family? How do we interact? How do we actually teach and bring them into the truth? Right. Because some would think in certain cases that you may beat them over the head with precepts. Some may think that, OK, I can will my family in the church. But brothers and sisters, those of that, that have been in the church for a, a specific amount of time, for a certain amount of time, you realize the truth comes the same way it came to you. Very easy. Very smooth. It comes, it comes in because nine times out of ten, you've been searching for it. And that was just the answer to the end of your prayers, brothers and sisters. So we're going to give you a step-by-step -step guide this afternoon, brothers and sisters, of how to operate, right, and being a follower of Christ and interact in interacting with those in the world and those who are in the church, right? So without further ado, brothers and sisters, we're going to open our Bibles. We're going to go to the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 29, right? And we're going to let the precepts speak this afternoon, right? in the world, but not of it, right? Ephesians 4 and 29. Brother and officer Yatab, read. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Hold up now. So when we get into this truth, we get baptized under the Most High. The scripture says, let no corrupt communication come out of your mouth. Because why? That corrupt communication, brothers and sisters, could hinder all those that would be on the outside trying to come on the inside, right? If you're teaching on the streets, brothers and sisters, we know what we see on the internet. We know what we see in different churches. But is that the particular way to win souls? Not necessarily. That's not the proper way. Brothers and sisters, we must operate in the spirit of of meekness and humility dealing with the fruit of the spirit like it says in Galatians right so keep reading go ahead but that which is good to the use of edifying that it may minister grace unto the hearers so brothers and sisters it's we must use our words to edify right so when we're on the street when, when we're out there even when we're talking to our family we have to use our speech to edify, right? And we're going to get into certain phrases a little later, like, that's pagan, right? You hear that a lot. Okay, mom, don't do that. That's pagan. Okay, because that's pagan. Don't do this. Don't do that. But let's see if that's pleasing to the most high, if that's the way that we should communicate, right? Let's now go, hold that, and let's go to 1 Timothy 3, and then we're going to go to 1 Peter 3, right? But we're in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1, right? Go ahead. This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. Now, obviously, brothers and sisters, if you look to be in the ministry, if you look to do the work to, to edify others, brothers and sisters, Okay, you're desiring a good work. Now, it says a bishop must be blameless, right? But brothers and sisters, that applies to everyone. Because keep in mind, the Most High said that we will all be kings and priests to him. So this just doesn't apply to a bishop trying to operate and be blameless, right? Go ahead, read. Jumping down to verse 7. Matter of fact, no, hold that. Yep, jump down to verse 7. Excuse me, go ahead. Moreover... He must have a good report of them which are without. Hold up now. Here's where the scripture actually meets the reader and the doer of the word at a conflict. 
not only should you have a good report with those that are in the church, but the scripture says that you should have a good report with them that are without. Brothers and sisters, it's important that when you do interactions with others, that they see the light of Christ in you, right? We come, in, we come in into this understanding, into this knowledge, and of course, it becomes, well, I have this understanding, the world is pagan, this is pagan, this is wrong, but the scripture says specifically that we should have a good report for those that are without. Read. Lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. Exactly. So even though it's talking specifically here about the role of a bishop, keep in mind, this really applies to everyone. We have to have a good report, brothers and sisters, for people that don't have the understanding of Christ. When people see you in the streets, they should see a good person. They should, be, they should see the most high in you. How would they ever receive the truth if they don't see it in you? Okay, you have to embody what you believe and what you're doing, right? So now let's pivot. Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15, right? Go ahead. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready. Right. Go ahead. Always to give an answer to every man that ask if you are reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Now, how could one give an answer if you came and the truth was aggressive to someone? If you brought the truth and the truth was abrasive, right? And I'm gonna tell you, brothers and sisters, as we, we go in the churches, you see that we're talking about on the women's side, etiquette classes. We're talking about with the men, business, economics. We're talking about growing up and maturing, not just in, in one aspect, but in other aspects of your life. So when you give, when you deal with the truth, brothers and sisters, it's a certain way you must handle it. Read that again from the top, sir. Go ahead. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that ask if you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. That's the key. With meekness and with fear. Okay? Keep in mind, brothers and sisters, the truth was never made to beat somebody over the head with it. You don't win anybody over with beating somebody over the head with this truth or trying to ram it down their throat. You give this truth with meekness, okay, to make sure that brothers and sisters could actually receive the truth, right? Now, right, let's go, let's keep reading, go ahead. Verse 16, having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you as of evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. Exactly, brothers and sisters, because what? Eventually, what's the world going to understand? The world is going to understand that the things that we've been telling them and teaching them is actually true. How many times have you seen prophecies that have been broken down from, these, from this particular class or this channel and it's come to pass? Well, brothers and sisters, really, that bears record in itself, right? You bear record in, in, in yourself. If you operate as the part, as that person that's in the truth with meekness, with fear, that draws people to the most high. That makes people say, okay, that, that, I, I could get with this brother. I could get whatever he has, whatever she has, I want it, right? Because brothers and sisters, what we, what we don't want to do we don't want to make the truth unapproachable. We don't want to make the truth something where it's a thing of, it's a standoffish thing. Already, brothers and sisters, we know the way that the media, the, the way that they spin it and show it, they show truth in Israelites in a negative connotation, right? So brothers and sisters, it's our job to make sure that when it comes to the truth, that we show the world a good representation, right? Like we spoke about all the beauty, brothers and sisters, that came with the, with the Passover, 
right? Remember when we brought all the kids up there and we, we showed that next generation? How could you have something negative to say about that? That's beauty. That's love. That's the love of the scripture. The next generation to come up living in a world where, listen, they, they're, they're healthy. They have a knowledge and understanding of the most high. They're living a clean life. Nine times out of ten, they'll be good family men. They'll be good wives. This is what the Most High is calling us to be, right? Now, let's hold that and let's get Luke to sixth six chapter. So the book of Luke, chapter 6, verse 27, right? Let's go there. Now, here's what's deep about this, brothers and sisters. Because we must do something for those who oppose us, Right? Anybody that opposes us, we must operate in a different way. Now watch this, brothers and sisters, right? Verse 27, go ahead. But I say unto you, which hear, love your enemies. Do what now? Love your enemies. The Bible says, if you have an enemy. Now, we always associate enemies with maybe another person or a different nationality, and we're like, okay, well, that's the enemy. Well, simply, brothers and sisters, stated in this particular scripture, an enemy could be anyone that opposes the will of the Almighty. It could be anybody that opposes the doctrine of Christ. So the Bible says, love your enemies. You're supposed to kill people with kindness, okay? You're supposed to make sure that when it's this truth, you entreat with this truth, right? And I'm saying that for a reason, brothers and sisters, because it seems as if when you look at times, sometimes people utilize this truth in these scriptures to be harsh, to point people's faults out, to say what people are not doing, right? Oppose teaching through love, submission, and humility, right? Because, brothers and sisters, the word didn't come to you in a state where you were locked up in a corner and hemmed up and you had to receive it. No, it came at a point where you really needed it, right? This truth came when a lot of times you were at your wit's end looking for the Most High God and you really needed an answer. This truth came when, when, when you were in a situation and you were like, okay, I don't know who the Most High is, but I pray that he reveals himself to me. That's when this truth came to you. So you have to realize, brothers and sisters, right? You have to love your enemies, right? You have to love people that oppose you because you never know what souls you're going to win over by having the spirit of love, meekness, and humility, right? Now, brothers and sisters that are watching worldwide, this may seem like a base level entry lesson, but I'm going to tell you, it's very important that you take heed in what's being spoken of here on the Sabbath, because we're going into the time, and that's the theme of the academy, working and operating in Jacob's trouble. So in Jacob's trouble, brothers and sisters, we're going to have to operate at an all-time high when it comes to patience. And I'm talking about families included, right? Husbands and wives working together, families working together, right? Because when you look in the Old Testament, this is some of the problems that plagued us under Moses. Domestic issues, fighting in the wilderness, bill, decree, de, decrees and, and bills of divorcement, right? where we couldn't even as a people get it together to a certain degree because we were too busy fighting amongst each other, right? So we have to realize, brothers and sisters, that we have to make sure that going forward that the Most High is in this heart. That's why the Bible tells you about the circumcision of the heart, right? Now watch this now. Keep reading, sir. L read from the top, Luke 6 and 27. Come on. But I say unto you, which here, come on, love your enemies, 
do good to them which hate you. Do good to them which hate you. That means that, brothers and sisters, you must have a working knowledge of who's against you. Okay? Brothers and sisters, we know that everybody that may tune in or this or that may not be members of the church. They may not even be in the doctrine. But, but we pray that eventually, through the teaching of the Almighty and the working of the Holy Spirit and the humility and love of brothers and elders, that it will win over a soul. So you don't, you don't quit. You don't stop. You don't, you, you don't stop caring and being nice for, to someone because they oppose you, okay? And we're gonna go into some precepts a little later about that, but you don't, brothers and sisters, okay? It's not really a care and a love if you only render the good when good is coming to you, right? Let's go read it. Verse 28, bless them that curse you. Do what now? Bless them that curse you. Bless them that curse you. Brothers and sisters, I see you're doing a great job in there. Hit that like button, brothers and sisters. Drive this traffic on. Okay? Different message, brothers and sisters, that you would normally be hearing from Israelites. A message, you know, some may say, oh, man, this is a little soft. But brothers and sisters, it took an act of humility for us all to have a way back to the kingdom. It took an act of love through Yeshia for us to be able to even be sitting here in this room. So, brothers and sisters, that's the only way. Right? Now, look what it says here. Bless them that curse you. Read. And pray for them which despitefully use you. Hold up now. Like I said earlier, you must know, brothers and sisters, who's not for your turn. You must know that. See, when you have a work and knowledge of that, you know that, and you're able to still pray for them. See? So when people are opposing you, you still have to realize, I still must do my due diligence and pray for them. Okay? It's not good for me to go and, and, and just deal with different things and say, you know what? You're pagan. You don't listen here. You'll never get it here. Because all that, brothers and sisters, could have been said about us. All that, when we, were in, when we were in the world and we were operating without a baptism, all these things could have been said about us. Oh, that person's not going to get it. This person is not going to make it. I, I, I can't see them being in the kingdom of heaven. Okay? So we must pray for them. Right? Now, Right? Read that particular caption, Brother and Officer Yatab. An enemy doesn't have to be someone who doesn't like us, but could be also a person who despises the Most High and his ways. Mm -hmm. Perfect example of this scripture, in effect, is the average coworker or family member. Go ahead. That doesn't follow the ways of God. They come to you and say, Merry Christmas. Now check out this example, right? Someone may come to you and say, Merry Christmas, right? Y'all, do y'all know what response we should give when somebody say Merry Christmas? Huh? What you say? Okay, somebody said thank you. Somebody said happy holidays, my sister. Enjoy their holiday. Okay. All right, well, let's see. Y'all are close. Y'all are along the lines. You have to understand, right? Watch this now, because what did the scripture say to do? See this, brothers and sisters? Hey, I heard it in the back. Right? Because Merry Christmas, the way that we would look at it, or these particular greetings, we would look at these things almost as a negative or, or putting another God on us or doing this or doing that. Almost like what the scripture says, a cursing. So let's see what the scripture says. Read that again, Luke 6 and 28. Bless them that curse you. Okay, Merry Christmas. Bless you. See? Brothers and sisters, I'm going to tell you, 
Bring, bring them in. Put the, hit that like button. Because I'm going to tell you, brothers and sisters, this is what a, a, a lot of our nation needs to hear. Okay? It's not about attacking one another and biting one another and devouring one another. It's about bringing each other to the understanding and the obedience of Christ. Through what? Through love, servitude, and humility. Bless those that curse you. Read. And pray for them which despitefully use you. And pray for those who despitefully use you. Okay? Now, we all know, brothers and sisters, that it's not an easy task. But it's okay. This is the ministry that we were called to do. This is the ministry where we were called to operate in. To bless those that curse us. Right? And here's the thing, brothers and sisters, so one may ask, they may ask, well, what if my family member is hard-headed? What if they don't get it? Well, brothers and sisters, it doesn't stop you from praying for them. It doesn't stop you from believing in the Most High that he can actually touch their spirit and their heart to give, to make the turnaround. Because guess what? He did it for us. See? See? So watch this now. Let's go to the next record. Let's go to Romans chapter 12, verse 17. Right? Romans 12 and 17. Go ahead. Recompense to no man, evil for evil. You see that? So let's say if someone is, is, is saying that, oh, man, you in a cult. Right? <laughs> Let's, let's, let's say, oh, man, well, I don't know about this thing. They got them going this way and that way. Well, listen, never recompense evil for evil. I, well, I, if I'm in a cult, the church you in is definitely a cult. That's not the answer. <laughs> That's not the answer, brothers and sisters. Never recompense evil for evil, but what? Read. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. Read. Verse 18. If it be possible. If it be what? If it be possible. Do what? As much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. You see what it says? It says all that lieth in you, meaning everything it takes for you to be peaceable, do that. Someone may be working your nerves. Someone may be at, at bringing you to the brink, brothers and sisters, where you're like, oh, man, they ain't never going to get it. But listen, it says, if it all be possible, do what? Read. As much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Right, because, brothers and sisters, the Bible says we're going to be judged on every idle word we speak. So how do we greet each other? Shalom. Shalom. So we say in peace, 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 peace. But we can't be a people of perpetual war, war, war. See? The Most High is calling us to be a peaceable, loving people. Okay? That's how you win souls over. Right? Keep reading. Verse 19. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves. Mm, wait, hold up. See? Brothers and sisters, so when you're wronged, the Bible tell you not to avenge yourself. I know the first instinct, brothers and sisters, when someone is personally attacked is to lash out and, and to go and, and actually feel as though they have to go and retaliate. Right. But let's read what the scripture is saying. Go ahead. But rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, vengeance is mine. Vengeance is whose? Vengeance is mine. Now, either we believe it or we don't. Vengeance is mine. This is what the Most High is saying. The Bible says to give place to wrath. You know what the Bible says? It says be angry, but sin not. I can understand that something is under my skin, right? Right? I can understand if these are the cases, but at the end of the day, you have to make sure, brothers and sisters, right, 
that it's what you do when the anger comes in. Right? Right? Book, verse, and chapter, when you read it, announce the book, verse, and chapter for me. Thank you. Romans chapter 12, verse 19. That's it. Come on. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. Mm. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. The Lord said he would repay. So who are we trying to get to get back? The Lord said that he would repay for those who have wronged. Now, of course, brothers and sisters, you're not going to let someone continue to do the same thing over and over again. Okay, you wronged me. I forgive you. I'm not putting you in a position to hurt me again. <laughs> okay. But after that, right, if someone make another transgression that's completely different, you're not supposed to hold over their head the offense that they did that was different than this one. Everything should be on a case-by-case -case basis. Now, of course, if somebody step on your toe and they continue to step on your toe, we're going to have to have a deep conversation. Okay? N no, you ain't going to keep doing this. But understand, brothers and sisters, we were called to peace. Right? Keep reading. Romans chapter 12, verse 20. That's it. Come on. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. Mm, it says, if your enemy hunger, feed him. That's an interesting thing. If your enemy hunger, feed him. Read. If he thirst, give him drink. Exactly. Because we all know, brothers and sisters, we see the signs that are happening within the earth. Eventually, brothers and sisters, what we've been prepping for and what we've been speaking about for years on end is going to happen. And of course, where your family member is going to run to? You. Now, that doesn't mean, brothers and sisters, you give all of your resources because we know the parable of, of the ten virgins, the five wise and the five foolish. But listen, here you go. Here go a little bit of rice. Here go some water. This should sustain you. Okay, and, and we're going to keep it moving. The doors is locked. Clicker, clicker. Huh? But it tells you, brothers and sisters, to even feed those that would oppose you. Right? Come on. Ending of verse 20. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Verse 21. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Mm, see? But overcome evil with good. Someone said in the chat, it's hard to forgive, but it's necessary. You would be correct. Yes, it's hard to forgive, but it's necessary. But you must understand it's the only way to be because, brothers and sisters, even in the commandments, you're supposed to love your neighbors thyself. Let's speak about it. Let's talk about it on the Sabbath. Because at the end of the day, brothers and sisters, we wouldn't be here if the Most High God from the throne through Christ didn't forgive us. Right? That's right. So how would it be that we would be here if someone didn't already render the love and mercy and grace to us first? So even by brothers and sisters repenting and turning 180 and doing what's right, we must forgive the same way we were forgiven. Okay? This is the only way we're going to make it, brothers and sisters, because I'm going to tell you, we think that it's, it, it's, it's, this, is, this may be a simple or basic topic, but brothers and sisters, there is, you're not going to make it with unforgiveness in your heart to the next stage of this thing. Okay? You hate your brother? Listen, it's going to be your demise. The, Christ said a kingdom divided against itself shall not stand. It's going to be the demise of a household. It would be the demise of a church if people are against each other. It would be the demise of family, friends, and loved ones if you are against each other. Brothers and sisters, the only way is to forgive and move forward. That's the way to life, right? Read verse 21, Romans 12 and 21 again. Go ahead. Be not overcome of evil, 
But overcome evil with good. But overcome evil with good. You be a living witness. You be the example. You show what's right in the earth. Okay? Let's hold that and let's go to the book of Luke, brothers and sisters. Let's go to Luke chapter 16. We're going to start at verse 1. Right? Because we're going to see what Yeshia has to say on this matter. Right? And what he taught the disciples. Right? We in the book of Luke, chapter 16, verse 1. Right? You coming in, brothers and sisters, hit that like button. Right? You're doing a wonderful job. Right? Let's go. St. Luke, chapter 16, verse 1. And he said also unto his disciples, There was a certain rich man which had a steward, and the same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods. Read. And he called them and said unto him, How is it that I hear this of thee? Give an account of thy stewardship, mm. for thou mayest be no longer a steward. Read. Verse 3. Then the steward said within himself, What shall I do? For my Lord taketh away from me the stewardship. I cannot dig. To beg, I am ashamed. I am resolved what to do, that when I am put out of the, stu out of the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. Verse? B verse 5. So he called every one of his Lord's debtors unto him, and said unto the first, how much owest thou unto my Lord? How much do you owe unto the Lord? Go ahead. Verse 6. And he said, An hundred measures of oil. And he said unto him, Take thy bill and sit down quickly and write fifty. And write fifty. He owed a hundred, but he said, Sit down and write thy bill to fifty. Read. Verse 7. Then he said he to another, And how much owest thou? How much do you owe? Read. And he said, An hundred measures of wheat. And he said unto him, Take thy bill. And do what? And write for a score. And write for a score. Right? So notice what they're owing is being reduced. Right? Read. Luke chapter 16, verse 8. And the Lord commended the unjust steward because he had done wisely. For the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. Exactly. If you could, Brother and Officer Yatab, read that caption for me real quick. Thank you. Out of all the Messiah's parables, this needs to be read, explained, and broken down properly. Come on. When Christ said that the rich man commended the unjust steward, he was not approving or accepting what the steward did but rather amazed and somewhat impressed that he would even think of an idea like that. Exactly. Go ahead. Christ also said that the children of the world are wiser than the children of light. Come on. Again, this needs to be explained and broken down. Christ is saying that the people of the world are ambitious and always thinking about the next move to achieve their goals. He is saying if we apply that same mindset and trying to achieve the kingdom and show our righteousness and goodness to the world, people would accept us. See that? So it's about playing chess and not checkers. This is what this walk is. Understand, brothers and sisters, from the day you receive this truth to the day you reach your judgment, everything is being measured, right? So when you're, when you're dealing with people, understand that it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. So if I'm, if I'm abrasive this day, if I'm aggressive this day, then what's that going to mean two years down the line? Because brothers and sisters, when you get this truth, you're not all, all going to get it initially. Okay? Think about the first time that you came in this truth. You dealt with the feast days. You dealt with the Passover. You dealt with all these things. You really didn't know what was going on. Now, four years, five, six, eight years down the line, now you do them without even thinking, without even blinking, right? But years past, you look back and be like, man, I, had, I, I didn't have a full understanding of what I was really into. So keep in mind, brothers and sisters, 
We must play the long game. We must understand what patience possess you, your soul. It takes a while to plant a seed and for that seed to come back and grow, right? So what you do initially, brothers and sisters, bodes a lot for what happens later, okay? So when you're dealing with presenting this truth to the world or even operating within the spirit of the almighty, realize that everything, brothers and sisters, is being measured, right? Now, let's grab Luke, right? We're still in Luke, excuse me. Let's get the, the ninth, let's get the ninth verse. So we're in Luke chapter 16, verse nine. We're continuing in Luke, right? Go ahead. And I say unto you, make to yourselves friends of the mammon of unrighteousness, mm. that when ye fail, they may receive you into everlasting habitations. Exactly. So for those that don't know, mammon is earthly wealth or treasure. Our affections, brothers and sisters, is supposed to be heavenly. I'm doing this for this to happen later. Even when you do things for yourself personally, brothers and sisters, understand that there should be an end goal for what you're doing okay i'm doing this and this is going to benefit my family this way i'm doing this and this is going to benefit my nation this way right remember brothers and sisters we went through all these troubles that was in the world and all this and we was telling brothers and sisters throughout it all try to start something right if you have a couple resources, a couple dollars here, a couple dollars there, you have a kitchen, you have a restaurant, right? You have this, you have that. Brothers and sisters, we, we have to realize those things aren't the mammon of the world. That's the mammon of the, that's, 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 that's the riches and wealth of the kingdom. That's building the kingdom up. Everything we do, brothers and sisters, has to be calculated. That's why the parable was, Think ahead. That was the whole mindset. The children of, of this world are wiser than the children of light because, like I said, they always thinking about the next scenario. I'm doing this, and then this is going to do this. This law is put in place, and, and this is going to do this later. Well, if I put this law in place, later on it's going gonna, it's gonna to deal with this. So they're always thinking ahead. So we, brothers and sisters, should always think ahead, right? Even though... Tomorrow's not promise. You still, brothers and sisters, should look optimistically. You should still have a, a, a long-term plan and keep working until Christ come and actually judge this world. So you never stop working until the end, right? Now, let's continue in the book of Luke. We're in the book of Luke, chapter 16, verse 10, right? Read it. He that is faithful in that which is least. That is, which is what? He that is faithful in that which is least. He that's faithful in a little bit. Read. Is faithful also in much. Exactly, brothers and sisters. So here it is. When you have a tax to do, you have something to do. Understand, brothers and sisters, we're being measured on the simple things. Simple things, brothers and sisters, Believe it or not, take you to the next level. Can you be faithful, okay, in your posts at the church? Can you be faithful being on time when the service happens? Can you be faithful in tithing? Can you be faithful a little thing? Because if you could be faithful in a little, you could be faithful in much. All these different things parallel to other things outside of what you're doing. Remember, we're supposed to play the long game. I'm doing this because this is going to benefit me th later this way. I'm doing this. This is going to build Christ's kingdom this way. See? So when you, do a, when you do a little bit, brothers and sisters, it says a lot. But imagine, brothers and sisters, if you couldn't operate and fulfill the little bit. That's saying even much more. Read. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. Mm. Go ahead. Verse 11. 
right? Now read that one more time, the end of verse 10. Read where Luke chapter 16, verse 10. Go ahead. And he that is unjust in the least mm. is unjust also in much. See? So if you feel like there's something that you're doing in life for the most high. And it's like, ah, oh, well, you know what? I really desire to be a teacher. So, you know, I, I don't need to clean this bathroom if you're in sanitation. Brothers and sisters, you really can't get to that without mastering the least. You can't get to the different higher applications without being a servant. Christ said the greatest amongst you would be your servant. So brothers and sisters, what you do in the least shows what you would do if you had a big responsibility. Okay, when you're doing the things that seem uncomely in the background, brothers and sisters, when it's time for you to be in the limelight, you'll know how to operate because why? You've operated in the least, see? But like it says here, it says, read it again. If ye what? Go ahead. First, Luke chapter 16, verse 10. That's it. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. Go ahead. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. In much. And brothers and sisters, we must take steps every day to get better. We must rectify and mortify this flesh, as the scripture says, mortify these members. Every day we have to get better. Better self-control, better discipline, right? Better love and affection for one another. Better kingdom building. Quicker to forgive, right? Building blocks, right? Now, let's continue. We're still in Luke. We're in the next verse. We're in verse 11. We're in Luke 16 and 11. Let's go. If therefore ye have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? Lord, have mercy. That's something in itself, right? Go ahead. Read here. Read that caption. If we can't be trusted with wealth of this world, do you think the Most High will trust us with the riches of heaven? And brothers and sisters, I've been telling the body this. Remember, brothers and sisters, the Bible tells you that the government sits on Christ's shoulders. So this particular, this walk of life is, is a system in a world in itself. With, with a government, right? With three branches. What are the three branches, brothers and sisters? executive, judicial, and legislative, right? So, of course, being in this truth, we have laws, right? And, be, and with the laws, right, whether you do buy them or not, there's a judgment. But, brothers and sisters, there's, always, there's also an executive portion of the kingdom, okay? Realize, brothers and sisters, when the scripture says, okay, if you can't deal with the unrighteous mammon and what you do, how, brothers and sisters, can we be trusted with the real riches that come in, right? So understand this point. This is why when we talk about the church, we do have conversations about economics. We do have conversations about people obtaining and being stable. Because that's part of your belief system, brothers and sisters. You may not have it all. But brothers and sisters, it's something that we just can't look and be oblivious to. Understand where you sit within this world, okay? To be able to have resources to help one or another, right? If you're, if you're constantly in the negative on things, you can't help the kingdom, okay? But if you're on the positive and you're building towards something, then you're an asset. Okay? Now, right? Let's keep reading. Book, verse, and chapter. Where you at? We're in St. Luke chapter 16, verse 12. Come on. And if you have not been faithful in that which is another, another. another man's, 
who shall give to you, who shall give you that which is your own? Read verse 13. No servant can serve two masters. Come on now. Now check it out, brothers and sisters. The Bible is detailing no man could serve two masters. Right? Read. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the, the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. Now, brothers and sisters, I bet you didn't realize that the Most High is looking at us and judging us on how we operate with the possessions we have in this world. Read that again, sir. No, sir Luke chapter 16, verse 13. No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other. Now hold that and read verse 12 again. Luke 16 and 12. Go ahead. And, ye have, and if... You have not been faithful in that which is another man's. So if you haven't been faithful in which is another man, understand that this nation, right, is given, this world is given in the hands of the wicked. We're not in the ruling class, right? We're in the serving class. So we have to actually get and obtain things from people who have things in possession. But brothers and sisters, what you do with those things is key. Okay, how you take care of what you have now is key. Because how does that translate? Remember, we're working for the long game. Right? We have laws that comes with community. We have moral law. We have a, a civil law. We have a spiritual law. Right? So what we do, and I said this in, a, in another lesson, what we do the six days we labor matters. And most of those six days you labor, brothers and sisters, you're, you're, you're away from the body. So what you do at home, brothers and sisters, the seventh day coming together is really the relaxation and the payoff for everything. So how you operate within those six days is key. Understand, brothers and sisters, we're being measured on how we operate as well, not just within, but without. Okay? People wouldn't even associate the fact that how I operate in my home is a part of the ministry. It is. How cleanly, I, how cleanly I am at home is part of the ministry. Because you just can't hit a button, brothers and sisters, snap your fingers, and something change. You have to rehearse the righteous acts. You have to work those six days and perfect what you have so when we come together, the Most High's day is orderly. Okay? I'm going to tell you, brothers and sisters, it's key. We don't understand how important our life outside, away from the saints of the Almighty is. See? We can't just come in here and expect, brothers and sisters, something that, no, brother. We have to make sure that we're doing our part even while we're away. Right? The scripture says here. If you have not been faithful in which is another man's, who shall give, it says, who shall give you that which is your own? Right? If you can't be faithful under someone else's kingdom and, and be thankful for the little bit you got, how are we going to be when we got our own kingdom? See? The mindset of just waiting for the kingdom, like what Christ said, the kingdom cometh not with observation. Waiting for the kingdom to happen, and then when it happens, then you get it in gear? No. Brothers and sisters, all the things that we're doing now is measured for later. The respect of others. The respect of elders. You don't have respect of elders now. How are you going to have respect for the elders in the kingdom? If you don't have love for your brothers and sisters now, how are you going to have love for those who are amongst you when we're in our own kingdom. Okay? 
There is no magic button, brothers and sisters, that's going to make you get it together at the last minute. We have to get it together now. That's it. See? Go ahead. Book, verse, and chapter. Luke, chapter 16, verse 13. Read. No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Exactly. Right? So now let's go to 1 Corinthians, right? Chapter 10. Right? We're in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, starting at verse 23. Right? Now watch this, brothers and sisters. Right? Let's go. All things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. Hold up now. Because this scripture is utilized a lot, right? But you have to understand the meaning behind this scripture. It says, all things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. Read. All things are lawful for me, but all things edify not. See, brothers and sisters, when it comes to the Holy Spirit, you must work and operate in wisdom. Not everything is good all the time. You must know when it's good and know when to refrain. Just because something may, okay, well, I, I, I'm going to tell them that this is pagan and, and this isn't right and, and they should burn this down. Okay, albeit that might be a truth. And God hates those feast days. He hates those assemblies. It's how you operate with them that you're being judged on. See? Everything that seems right at the time, brothers and sisters, you have to quantify these things within, within the scriptures and the Holy Spirit and wisdom. And realize when to operate and when to hold back. Read. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 24. Come on. Let no man seek his own. Let no man seek his what? Let no man seek his own. Come on. But every man another, another's wealth. Read. Verse 25. Whatsoever is sold in the shambles, that eat, asking no question for conscience sake. For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Exactly, brothers and sisters, right? Read that particular caption, right? And then break that down. The liberty that has been given to us is not used to put a stumbling block in front of anyone. Exactly, but right? But so hold up. But if you know there's a stumbling block, brothers and sisters, that's somewhere, then obviously it's better not to be the stumbling block to your brother. It's better to modify things, even if you're right. Okay? Read. But rather to edify. The shambles was a Gentile meat market. According to our custom, this meat would be considered common or defiled because it wasn't prepared by us, so it wasn't according to the word of the apostles as long as it is of the dietary law. Exactly. So the word there, that's where within that scripture, you, you get that word kosher. See, it wasn't kosher because the meat that they were dealing with wasn't handled by us. But the scripture is telling you, OK, well, that breaks it down. Right. Because many have said, well, what if I go to a market and all they have is halal meat? Do I eat it or do I not eat it? Well, it wasn't dealt with our hands. Well, brothers and sisters, if that's the only righteous and lawful meat that's within your area and it's handled properly, well, listen, your prayer will cover it. But to analyze something and say, well, no, I'm, I'm not going to deal with this and I'm going to sit here and just eat rice and grains. Brothers and sisters, that ain't the way. You have to understand when to operate in wisdom and when and when not to. 
But here, let's apply the scripture. Right? Let's say if you are around some brothers or sisters that was fairly new. Right? You weren't with your family or you weren't with people of a long tenure understanding. Then in that instance, brothers and sisters, you avoid that meat or that food altogether. Because your liberty is going to probably break their spirit. See? You have to know when to operate and when not to operate. You being around brothers and sisters understand that the Bible says that the strong will bear the infirmities of the weak. So sometimes people are not in the same understanding. Some people, sometimes people are not in the same level. So we must understand how to operate under the tenets of Christ not to be a stumbling block to others. See? It's all about timing. It's all about how you use this understanding. Okay, you must be a swordsmith with this word. You must be a swordsmith with your understanding. Okay? Watch this now. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 10 and, and, and 27, right? So now we go to, to the book of 1 Corinthians. We continue it. We have 1 Corinthians 10 and 27, right? Go ahead. If any of them that believe not bid you to a feast. Now watch this. Hold up. Because everybody in this room, everybody that's watching online, have been in this scenario. Right? If any of them that believe not bid you to a feast. Right? And? And ye be. Right? Disposed to go. And you be disposed to go. You're in, you're in a place where, you know, your loved ones, your family... It might be your job, a, a, a company barbecue, right? They're, they're, they're pulling at you. They're tugging at you. And you're disposed to go. Read. Whatsoever is set before you, eat, asking no question for conscience sake. Now, obviously, brothers and sisters, I must make this clear, right? <laughs> that don't mean eat a pickled pork sandwich. Right? That don't mean get a chitterlin and a chitterlin and hot sauce and put it on the bread and say, well, the scripture says eat it. No. No. Right? You find what's righteous to eat within that scenario and eat it and not, and not be a stumbling block to somebody within that gathering. Like, oh, no, 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 no. I'm going to have some more of this salad. This salad is real good. Right. You, you got to understand how to be smooth and operate with the spirit of the most high. No, no, no. You know what? Let me tell you something. These mashed potatoes are slamming. You ain't got no bacon in it. Right. OK, cool. Yeah, man. Th listen, this this mashed potatoes was slamming. Right. Now, watch this. This is the wisdom of the scriptures. Read. Go ahead. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 28. Come on. But if any man say unto you, this is offered in sacrifice unto idols. Read. Eat not for his sake that showed it and for conscious sake. For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Now, that's crystal clear. Right. Someone tell you, yeah, uh, we sacrifice this meat to Satan. <laughs> right. All, everything here is, is, is satanic. So I'm going to need you to take a bite of this satanic sandwich, right? This is the best cheesesteak you ever had in your life. No. Right? In good conscience, I know that the earth is the Lord's. And I, I can't, in good conscience, with the eyes of the Lord being over me, I can't know that you prayed all these demons in there purposely and did all this, you know, spirit cooking. And you're asking me to eat it. No. Right? Go ahead. First Corinthians 10 and 29. Conscience, I say, not thine own, but of the other. For why is my liberty judged of another man's conscience? Go ahead. Verse 30. For if I by grace be a partaker, why am I evil spoken of for that for which I give thanks? Come on. 
whether therefore ye eat or drink, or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. That's the understanding. Whatever you do, do it to the glory of the Most High God, Ahia. Whatever you do, think about what you're doing before you do it. And what implications it's going to have after you've done it. Read. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 32. Give none offense, neither to the Jews, nor to the Gentiles, nor to the church of God. Read that again, sir. Give none offense. Give none offense. Neither to the Jews. Neither to the Jews, so neither to our people. Read. Nor to the Gentiles. Nor to the Gentiles. So, brothers and sisters, like the scripture says, one manner of law for all people. Just because someone is not of the 12 tribes of Israel, someone's not, we're supposed to treat them, brothers and sisters, with the same respect. Okay? Read. Nor to the, to the church of the Mosai. Verse 33. Even as I please all men in all things, not seeking mine own profit, but the profit of many, that they may be saved. Because that's the end game, brothers and sisters. The end game is that you're winning souls. Okay, I went to this gathering. I didn't look at it for the pagan aspects. I didn't look at it to, 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 to ostracize somebody. I did it to win souls. Okay, well, well, why are you here at this dinner? Because I love you. And the Bible said that I should love my neighbor as myself. So I made an appearance. I may not be able to stay all day. But I, I wanted to see you guys. Right? Now, y'all got, got some lawful roast beef up in there? Okay, cool. All right, make me a sandwich. Right? <laughs> see? But your, your brothers and sisters, see, this, this particular lesson breaks the stigma of being stiff and rigid. In this truth. This breaks the stigma of, of us being a certain way in this truth, not understanding that A, you could be yourself. B, brothers and sisters, if you're in Christ and you're operating in Christ, there's security and liberty. Right? But understanding when to use your liberty and when not to. So all this boils down to, to, to understanding and dealing and operating with wisdom. Right? That's why it says, everything you do, do it to the glory of the Most High. Right? Now, let's go to one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible. Right? Because while we oppose the world and we do the things of the Most High, what comes? A trial comes. Trouble comes. Issues come. Right? Let's go to 1 Peter. We're in the book of 1 Peter, chapter 4, verse 12, right? And I want y'all to, to really analyze these, even for the viewing audience. Analyze this particular scripture, right? 1 Peter 4 and 12, right? Let's get it here. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. Now, check this out, brothers and sisters. This happens all the time. Oh, man, I'm just trying to do right by God. Why is this happening for me? Why is this happening to me? It's happening to you because you believe. <laughs> that's why, that's why you're, you're in a fiery trial, because you believe. So it tells you here, beloved, Think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as if some strange thing has happened unto you. So when trouble come, issues come, know that the reason why there's issues is because spiritually you're at war with the gods of this world. Okay. Read. First Peter chapter four, verse 13. Come on. But rejoice. And as much as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, 
that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also if exceeding joy. <laughs> joy. But go ahead. First Peter chapter 4, verse 14. Let's go. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. For the spirit of glory and of the most high resteth upon you. Exactly. And as Elder Dale said, I'm looking at the chat, he said, Christ went through it. Why wouldn't you? Yeah. Come on, Elder. See? Christ went through many sufferings. Christ went through many hardships. He understood that he had to go through. That's what we have to do. Being in this world, but not of this world, we have to go through. Okay, read. On their part, he is evil spoken of, mm. but on your part, he is glorified. Come on. Verse 15. But let none of you suffer as a murderer. Read. Or as a thief. But see, here's the thing. It's a righteous thing to suffer for righteousness sake. It's a righteous thing to suffer for doing what's good. But let none of y'all suffer as a murderer, as a thief. There's no excuse, brothers and sisters, for us to delve in the areas of darkness and say, no, now, now I'm suffering and, 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 and I'm a righteous man. No, you stealing. You're supposed to be suffering. Read. Verse 15. But let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's matters. Hold up. Deep. You don't want to suffer as a busybody in other men's matters. This world has made it so easy for people to be busybodies in other men's matters. People so volunteer their personal business. This is, brothers and sisters, this is everything that goes on in, 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 in the social media apparatus. What they doing today? What's going on? You heard what happened with such and such. You seen what happened with this. Well, brothers and sisters, I'm going to tell you. There's, there's, there's a judgment for being in other people's business. It's key, it's key and godly to mind your business. See, because the world, remember, we're in the world, but we're not of it. See, the world operates like that. They want to know the T and comment on everything and do this and do that. Brothers and sisters, I'm going to tell you, it's wise sometimes not to have a comment at all. It's wise not to have a, a stance in something that doesn't pertain to you at all. Well, you heard what happened with such and such? I don't need to know. It didn't come to me. I wasn't a witness of it. I don't need to hear it. I'm good. My life is peaceful right now. Please do not bring the chaos to me. See? But we're not supposed to. Why? Because let's analyze this again. Huh? It says, but let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief or as an evildoer or as a busybody in other man's matters. There's suffering that comes with that. See? Because once, brothers and sisters, you deal in, in someone else's business, now cross-examination comes. See? Now unwanted counsels and questions and, 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 and conversations have to be had when they didn't have to be had. So there's a judgment, brothers and sisters, for all these things. It's righteous to suffer for righteousness' sake, but to suffer for these things, brothers and sisters, this is what we shouldn't be suffering for. Right? Let's go. Keep reading. First Peter chapter 4, verse 16. Yes, sir. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian. As a who? As a Christian. As a follower of Christ. Brothers and sisters, the greatest com compliment. For the gathering of Christ's church. You sure they Israelites, they sure do act like Christians. Praise the most high. Praise the most high.
because we're followers of Christ. Huh? Read. Verse 16. Come on. Any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on his behalf. Read. For the time has come that judgment must begin. Where does judgment begin, sir? At the house of the Most High. Judgment begins with us. The Most High is looking at us to get it together. See? So before we could go and teach the world, brothers and sisters, it's what we do personally. It's the work that we actually put out there that dictates who we are in Christ because why? The judgment begins with us. Okay? The Most High is looking at, like it says, if we can't deal with what's another man's, how will we deal with the kingdom that's our own? We got a little bit of things to be faithful in, brothers and sisters. All we have to do is be a faithful servant of the Most High, a faithful mother, a faithful husband, a faithful wife, a faithful friend. These are the little things, brothers and sisters, that this, this is all we got to do in the world. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you, this flesh, if you give in to this flesh, it makes this, a, that little thing, a hard task. Okay? The Bible says, brothers and sisters, we would judge angels. How serious is it to judge angels? We can't, brothers and sisters, and we can't govern ourselves? Lord have mercy. Israel have to get it together. We, oh, I'm, I'm the chosen. I, I, I got this truth. I'm, I'm going to be in the kingdom. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. How's your personal life? Eh. Well, you got to be faithful in a few. You got to get that you got to get that house in order. Like it says in Titus and Timothy, if you can't rule your own house, how can you rule the house of God? How can you govern this? How could you watch and be over the, the world when it comes? Brothers and sisters, we're going to be the kings and priests of this world when Christ comes. That's a serious a serious responsibility. So we have to realize right now, we're, we're in training. And judgment begins with us first. See? So when we, when we wonder, brothers and sisters, when that fiery trial come and, and, and it's there, brothers and sisters, these are to make sure that those that are fine gold come out refined. Trial by fire. It's not going to be easy. Right? Let's go. First Peter chapter 4, verse 17. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of the Most High. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? Exactly. So there's going to be a sifting amongst Israel. There's going to be a sifting amongst God's chosen. Then what is it going to be for those that don't have this truth? Okay. But it seems as if sometimes being in the truth, we focus more on what's going to happen with those that don't have the truth instead of focusing on us who have it. Judgment begins with us. So it would, it, it would behoove us, brothers and sisters, to really monitor our ways and our steps daily. See? Come on. Verse 18. And if the righteous scarcely be saved. If the righteous, how, how is the righteous saved? Scarcely be the, saved. The righteous is scarcely going to be saved, brothers and sisters. That means we're going to make it by the skin of our teeth. As, as, as much as we feel as we're doing good works and we're baptized and we're doing all this, brothers and sisters, it's going to take every fiber of your being to make it in the kingdom. 
So when you're pressed on every side, when this ain't going right, when the bills ain't being paid, the house is this, this is a problem, that's a problem. Brothers and sisters, that's the fiery trial. Don't think it's strange. You're pressed on every side. But that's because judgment begins with us. Just like it says in the commandments, the most high has come to prove you. That your fear be before his face, that you sin not. See, come on. Verse 18, and if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Read. Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him and well-doing. Exactly. That means commit yourself to the most high God with everything you have, brothers and sisters, Right. That means give everything you have to the father. Right. Now. We're going to go to the next record. Let's go to first Thessalonians four and nine. I'm only going to grab a few more and then we're going to close first Thessalonians chapter four, verse nine. But as touching brotherly love, ye need not that I write unto you. Come on. For ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another. See. As for brotherly love, we're taught to love one another. That's just commonplace. When it comes to us being together as a family, as, 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 as Israelites, we're called to love one another. Okay? Read. Verse 10. And indeed, ye do it toward all the brethren which are in all Macedonia. Come on. But... We do beseech you, brethren, that ye increase more and more, and that ye study to be quiet. That you study to be what? And that ye study to be quiet. Brothers and sisters, do you know that there's a blessing in being still? I know, I know brothers and sisters, we always got a thought, we always have a comment, we always have an opinion. We always have something. But brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. It's a blessing in being quiet. I learned, brothers and sisters, from being in this church under great men and elders, how to be quiet. And brothers and sisters, y'all know I got a lot to say. When it's time for me to speak, I speak. But guess what? That's when it's time for me to speak. Otherwise, you will not hear me speak. It's a blessing, brothers and sisters, to study to be quiet. Watch this now. Read. Verse 11. And that you study to be quiet and to do your own business. Hold up. These comments are serious. These commas are serious. To be quiet. And then to mind your business. These are the precepts, brothers and sisters. This is what it means to be in Christ. Israelites are not supposed to run to the T. Israelites are not supposed to go and look and see what's juicy. No, they're supposed to study to be quiet and mind their business. You don't want to bring any evil or wicked spirits in your house that's unwanted brothers and sisters the odds are already stacked up against us without us bringing extra things in see go ahead and to, and to do your own business and and to work with your own hands and to what and to work with your own hands. Brothers and sisters, do you know if you're busy in this work, you don't have time to be in other people's business? If you work and you put your hands to the plow, brothers and sisters, you're too busy. You're not idle. Right? When I was growing up, that was, that was the statement. That was the saying. An idle mind is the devil's playground. You have, you have time to be idle and to play and to think and to do all this. De then you have time for spirits to come and do what? What they will with you. But if you're working, see? If you're serving, 
You don't have time, brothers and sisters, for these spirits. They don't have, they don't, they don't have time to catch up to you. Go ahead. And to work with your own hands as we commanded you. Verse 12. That ye may walk honestly toward them that are without. And that ye may have lack of nothing. That you may have lack of what? Of nothing. See, brothers and sisters, not just carnally, but spiritually. If you work, you'll have lack of nothing. Brothers and sisters, you know that's, that's the remedy for everything in this world. You have problems in this world, brothers and sisters. The Bible tell you that love or charity cover a multitude of sins. I got issues. Yeah, well, you know what? I'm going to work those issues out by working and, 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 and repenting and working under the most high. I'm going to put my hand to the plow. There's no other way, brothers and sisters. And guess what? I'm going to get my assignment. I'm going to do exactly what it says here. I'm going to be silent. I'm going to do my work and mind my business. See? This is the opposite of what they teach you in the world. No, the world's like, you got a problem? You know what? Go live. <laughs> right? Huh? You got a problem? Put it on the internet. Go live. Say, what, say what's on your mind. Utter every opinion and thought you have. Hurt everybody you can in the, in the meantime. And guess what? You do so much bridge burning, you can't do enough apology after that. See? Watch this now, brothers and sisters. Now, here's the deal. Because when we're together with those that are dark, brothers and sisters, we become dark. The Bible tell you how could two walk lest they be agreed. Your own, brothers and sisters, you, you're guilty as charged. You're only as good, brothers and sisters, as the company you keep. Right? 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. Watch what it says here, right? Go ahead. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. With who? With unbelievers. Brothers and sisters, it's different when you're going to a gathering or you're loving around family or those that don't, of course, show your love. But brothers and sisters, realize and know when it's time to go back to your peace and your particular solitude than to be unequally yoked with the unbeliever. Why? Because if you're with around people that are dark, you're eventually going to be dark. Read. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? Come on. And what communion hath light with darkness? Because you're going to want to be talking about holy things. You're going to want to talk about the scriptures. You're going to want to talk about these other things that comes with dealing with really what your reality is. Your reality is the truth. Go ahead. Second Corinthians chapter 6 verse 15. And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Come on. Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? With an infidel. Read. Verse 16. And what agreement hath the temple of the Most High with idols? Come on. For ye are the temple of the living God. As the Most High hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Go ahead. Verse 17, wherefore, come out from among them. Do what? Come out from among there them. There should be a clear distinction, brothers and sisters, between those that are in the truth and those that are in the world. See? Come out from, uh, from amongst them, my people. Read. And be ye separate. Huh? Saith the Lord. Come on. And touch not the unclean thing. Read. And I will receive you. So understand, brothers and sisters, it's a blessing to be private. 
Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, you're going to find, and, and don't get me wrong, you're going to receive lifelong friends in this church, in this truth. But I'm going to tell you, brothers and sisters, like the scripture says, if you have a friend, that friend must first be proven. Privacy, brothers and sisters, is key what coming into this truth. Remember when I first started this lesson, I said it would be a step-by-step -step guide on how to operate. Brothers and sisters, privacy is key. See? And a multitude of counselors have but one. See? Understand, brothers and sisters, how to deal with the spirit of, of, of endurance and stay in power. Because as he that endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. You could come in and, and shoot up like a rocket and fall right back to the ground. But if you're patient, you pace yourself, you prove everything and everybody that's around you, you listen to what's being said. And I'm going to tell you, brothers and sisters, it's key. This is why we have the programs in the church that we have. We have the Hebrew and Bible Academy. We have the weekly Sabbath lessons. We have blog talk. We have Friday night with Elder Ramar. We have, we, we have Elder Ari coming on. We have the Born of Levi experience. There's a reason why, brothers and sisters, because you have to understand the truth has a sound. Okay? You have to be able to understand and decipher when that sound that what you're hearing is different. It's through these classes, it's, 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 it's through the academy where you hear, okay, week one, creation of the universe, okay, it says this, it's doing this, and then someone says, all right, it's the Sabbath, and the moon is slithered, okay. Okay, obviously something is wrong here. All due respect. We must realize, brothers and sisters, and this is why we have to come together in these particular times. How could two walk the, lest they be agreed? Be not unequally yoked with the unbeliever. Read. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18. Come on. And will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons unto and daughters, mm. saith the Lord Almighty. Exactly. So Paul states being unequally yoked, right? That's a term, brothers and sisters, used in the Old Testament, right? It's in Deuteronomy 22 and 10, right? And we're just going to get a quote from it. You don't have to go there. Write it down in your notebooks. Deuteronomy 22 and 10. Read that, sir. Thou shalt not plow with an ox and a donkey together. Exactly. Because if, a, if, if, if an ox goes this way, you know the donkey going to go the other way. See? If you're plowing with an ox, the donkey is going to go. He, he might lay on the ground. Well, brothers and sisters, that's what it's like to be yoked with an unbeliever. Remember, yoke is what you put in the mouth of an ox to guide the ox. Right? So you shouldn't have an oxen on one side and a donkey on the other side. You're going nowhere. Well, that's what happens, brothers and sisters, when we're, equal, we're unequally yoked with the unbeliever. We end up in our journeys going nowhere. It stunts your growth. See? Watch this now. We almost done here. Right? Let's go here. Let's, let's get this example. I love this example that the elders have put forth, right? Let's read that as a true Christian. As true Christians, an ox already plowing, can't be taken on other beliefs and adding to ours. That is allowing a donkey to come help the plow. Exactly, right? So let's get this example here. Right? How could two walk lest they be agreed? Right? We get the example in Deuteronomy with an ox on one side and a donkey on the other side. Right? 
You're in the truth. You got you got the 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 the, the Bible Academy. You got your doctrine. You got what the elders is dropping on what on everything. The days of of years, marriage, judgment. Okay, read. You have people calling themselves Christians, but taking on belief in crystals, zodiac readings, the universe, and oneself. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, 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 what sign are you? What? Who are you talking to? The only sign that's given is Jonah. No, ain't none of that. See? So, brothers and sisters, that shows you, like, we in this truth, and then you find someone, and they're like, okay, well, this brother, man, he calling on a higher, right? But, but he dangling the crystals around, okay, something is wrong. See? You're going this way, right? And that person is going this way. Come on. And one soul, such as Buddhism and more, saying that they are trying to understand spirituality from the outside. Exactly. Well, you gotta be word, you gotta be mindful, brothers and sisters, about that. I'm spiritual. Lord have mercy. Brothers and sisters, that's code word for AKA warlock or witch. I'm spiritual. Okay. All right, you levitate in the night, ain't you? Huh? Go ahead. Paul is saying we are called to be set apart and to understand the work of the other, other nations is unclean. Mm. See? So watch this now. Let's go to 1 Timothy, right? 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1, right? Let's go. I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplica supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. Right? So supplication, prayers, thanks be given of all men, right? Second Timothy, or excuse me, first Timothy, excuse me, first Timothy two and two. Go ahead. For kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. See, there go another witness, brothers and sisters, that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life. Us, as, uh, us in this truth, brothers and sisters, we're not supposed to keep this thing going. You have an issue, brothers and sisters, the Bible say resolve it before the sun go down. Okay? I got an issue, I need to resolve it before the sun go down. Why? Because I don't know when the judgment is going to happen. So I got to be quick to reconcile. See? All this harboring and holding anger and unforgiveness and all that, brothers and sisters, that's not the way. You, you operate that way, you're going to be sifted. Easy. Right? Keep reading. Verse 3. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of the Most High, our Savior, mm. who will have that all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. Exactly. That's the will. That's, that's the goal. That all men would come to the will and the knowledge of the truth, brothers and sisters. And when we say the truth, right, that term is used in this world loosely. Right? I'm in the truth. I'm in the truth. I'm in the truth. Will you love your neighbor? You're not. No, I, I hate my neighbor. He's a, you're not in the truth. Oh, I, I'm in the truth. I this and that. And are you kind to your mother and father? No, I can't stand them. They were never there for you. You're not in the truth. Well, 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 I'm in the truth. I thank, thank the most high. He woke me up. I don't need no elders. I'm good. I, I get in the kingdom by myself. You're not in the truth. Like I said, brothers and sisters, the truth has a sound. Okay. Here it is, brothers and sisters. Let's go. Verse 5. For there is one God 
and one mediator between God and men. Come on. The man, Christ Yeshua. Yes, sir. Who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. In due time. So what happens, brothers and sisters, that means we must operate in patience because you'll be justified in due time. That's why the Bible says vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I don't got, listen, I don't, I don't have time to go back and forth with you. I don't have time to make this thing escalate here. Because you know what? If I'm right, the Most High is going to prove me right. Okay? But I don't need man to validate me for anything. Okay? That's how you operate, brothers and sisters. Right? First Peter's, right? We in first Peter chapter two, verse 13. Go ahead. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man. Hold up now. Now, brothers and sisters, let me give you some insight. When it says submit yourselves to every ordinance of man, understand the first and true government is under Christ. So when someone says, brothers and sisters, well, I, who, who says that I need some elders or leadership to follow to, to brothers and sisters, 1 Peter 2 and 3 does. Okay. Read the scripture, sir. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 13. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man. How many ordinances? Every ordinance. A of few. Man. Every. Some? Every, huh? every ordinance of man. Read. For the Lord's sake. For the whose sake? For the Lord's That's sake. That's how you know it's the ordinance under the most high because it's for the Lord's sake. Submit yourself to every ordinance under the most high for the Lord's sake. Read. Whether it be to the king as supreme. Read. Or unto governors. Come on. As unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers. And for the praise of them that do well. Come on. Verse 15. For so is the will of God, that with well-doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. Exactly, brothers and sisters. Because when you're in order, it makes things just look simpl simplistic. It's easy. I'm going to tell you, brothers and sisters. It's... it's, it's it's a righteous thing to serve. For some in the flesh, it's a hard thing to master. I wouldn't be able to sit here on this platform and teach if I didn't learn and study and watch years on years elders operate in person, online, and what have you. For you to be a good teacher or a good leader, you have to be an even better servant. An uh, even better follower. Understand that, brothers and sisters, we're working towards something, and Christ himself is bringing the government. It rests on his shoulders, as the scriptures say. See? So realize, brothers and sisters, this, this is nation building. And I spoke this week, I had a funeral, I spoke this week, and I told him I was in a mixed room of Christians and Muslims and all, all types, brothers and sisters. And I told the brothers and sisters, everybody went out, and you see all these videos viral, they see the eclipse, and you have people coming out, oh, praise Jesus, Jesus, all this. And I'm like, you couldn't have thought this was the end. And I sat in that room and I told those people, I said, when did, when did you hear the trumpet blast? The Bible say at the last trump. Did you hear a trumpet? And they all looked at me. They're like, look, I'm like, listen, our people, we have to, brothers and sisters, we got a lot to learn. We have a lot as a nation to get together, brothers and sisters. Yes, there are signs in the earth, but brothers and sisters, we all know what it takes and see it's lessons like this that will get us back on course. See? 
because we're so worried about all the other nations and what's happening with here and what's happening with there. Okay, that's fine what's, what's going on with the other nations. But brothers and sisters, judgment begins with us. So what's happening with us is way more important than anything else. See? Let's keep reading. Come on. First Peter chapter 2, verse 16. As free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness. Mm, read that again, sir. As free and not using your liberty for a cloak of, of maliciousness. Exactly, brothers and sisters. See, we should never use this word, right? For a, for a avenue of hate. And I say that, brothers and sisters, because... If you've been watching the lessons, you understand a lot of talk about what the Gentiles receive in and after this kingdom. We can't use this truth to exact our hatred for others. We have to use this truth to be better and be a light to this world and the Gentiles that are called by the Most High's name. Understand what this is, brothers and sisters, for me, gen for me generally, and I can only speak for myself. I want to be able to see the kingdom and, and be there with Christ, with the angels, with all that, and not have any type of animosity for anyone. That's, to be, that's supposed to be time you're supposed to get your rest in the kingdom. So how could we look at, at this belief or this understanding and think that it's about putting someone under our feet? See? Not realizing the law of servitude in the Old Testament. Because the law of servitude break it down. After those servants served those families, a lot of them didn't want to leave. They integrated into those families became part of the family, in love. We're accepted. It's like, and you say that, brothers and sisters, sometimes with Israelites, you look at it and they fumble in the Bible upside down like it don't say that. Watch this now, come on. As free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness. See, you can't use your liberty as a cloak of maliciousness to attack and to bite and devour people. See? Come on. But as the servants of God. But as the servants of the Almighty. That's what you use your liberty for, to show someone the righteous and love of Christ. Read. Verse 17, honor all men. Honor how many men? Honor all men. Honor only Israelites. Honor all men. Honor who? Honor all men. Honor all men, read. Love the brotherhood. Love the brotherhood, brothers and sisters. See? Whether he be Jew or Greek, Jew or, or Gentile, love the brotherhood. Lead, read. Fear the Most High. Honor the king. Honor the king. See, that's the fear of the most high. Why is it the fear of the most high? Because the Bible even tells you not to strive with genealogy. Brothers and sisters, you could be so sure, but you, but brothers and sisters, what suppose you, if your father, father's father, father, father's father, wasn't of the bloodline of the 12 tribes of Israel? Understand, brothers and sisters, then you, then you would look at it and want to be treated a certain way. So we have to understand, when it says honor all men, listen, if you're willing, if a man or woman is willing to follow Christ, and I'm talking about the tenants, dealing with the Sabbaths, dealing with the commandments, living a righteous life, brothers and sisters, that's, that's honor worthy. That's love. Anybody that wants to follow Christ. See? See? But I'm going to tell you, brothers and sisters, this is what the world, we're in the world, but we're not of it. The world works in division. 
The most high don't work in division. He said a kingdom divided against itself shall not stand. We got to come together. And then when, once we're together, then we gather everyone else together. See? Watch this now. We're in the book of John, St. John, chapter 15, verse 18. Now watch this, right? Because we're in finishing time now, right? Let's go. If the world hates you. If the world hates who? If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If the world hated Christ, understand that you're not going to be accepted. And it's fine, brothers and sisters. Read. Verse 19. If ye were of the world. If you were of the world, read. The world would love his own. It would love, listen, it would embrace you. Everything would be fine. Remember, the scripture says that the people of the Most High are a peculiar people. A royal priesthood. A little different. Read. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Mm. Right? What verse you at? Verse 20. Go ahead. Remember the word that I said unto you. The servant is not greater than his Lord. That right there is the key. Brothers and sisters, you're not at some point, form or fashion, you're not going to be able to get past what Christ went through. You're not going to be able to go past a serious trial in your life. And I'm going to tell you, brothers and sisters, everyone that was called to this truth, believe me, some point or another is going to go through a serious trial. But see, what are you, what and who you're made of and what, what's proven to who you are is how you operate in the midst of that trial. The servant is not greater than his Lord. Christ went through, you've seen the toughest trial in his life. And brothers and sisters, time and chance happen to all men. Everybody's going to go through one. And you pray that in those moments, that who you surround yourself with, who, 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 you, who you align yourself under is there as a support system in prayer, supplication, and solution base in those situations. I'm going to tell you. Because the trial, the fiery trial, is coming to all who believe Christ. So you can't revel in a situation where you see when one person is going through a trial and saying, who child, I'm glad that ain't me. Because your day is coming. See, the servant is not greater than his Lord. Read. Sorry. Excuse me. The servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. Come on. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. Exactly. Now let's go and jump two chapters over. We're in, we're in John still, St. John. Chapter 17, verse 13. Right? We're in John 17 and 13. Let's go. And now I come, come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. Come on. Verse 14. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world even as I am not of the world. And that's why, brothers and sisters, we're hated at times, or we feel like it's not our turn. Because we're not for the world, because we're not of it. So we shouldn't even try or attempt to conform to what this world, what it looks like. So when we see one thing, brothers and sisters, and we see the world rallying against and dealing with something, we should really be going the other way. Right? John 17 and 15. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world. Read. But that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. So guess what? And that's to all the Christians out there. 
Okay, there is no such thing as a rapture. See what it says here? I pray that thou shouldst, should, should it read that? I pray that thou shouldst take them out of the world, but that thou shouldst keep them from the evil. Exactly, that we should be kept from the evil. Brothers and sisters, we're going to go through. There's not, no, there's not a secret back door that we can go in and get out of our troubles. Brothers and sisters, this time that you see with the signs, as I come to a close with this particular lesson, I don't know if y'all seen it, but y'all seen that, that green emerald fireball that just hit Jersey? I'm going to show y'all the video. Happened two days ago. It's, it's on the New York Post. It's, 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 it's in the New York Times. It was a, br a big green comet. Cops caught it on the dash cam. And all, uh, listen, the sky lit up and all that. It looked like something out of a sci-fi movie. Okay? The earth is shaking in diverse places. So understand, brothers and sisters, it's time for Israel to come together. Because I'm going to tell you, brothers and sisters, the judgment is happening to this world. Okay? That's right. All those on the chat, Google it when you get a chance. YouTube it. It's there. Fireball, New Jersey. Right? But the Bible says not to be dismayed by the signs of heaven. But just know, brothers and sisters, when you start to see these different things happening one after another, well, it said that in Baruch, that it would be one thing after another. It'd be like birth pains until when? Until the consummation. Brothers and sisters, you want to see more events happening more rapidly than ever, than any, in any other time in this world. But the question is, brothers and sisters, you're in this world, but are you of this world? Where's your heart? Has your heart been circumcised? All these teachings that we've received from the elders, from this church, have you applied even the smallest things? Where do you stand? Keep reading. St. John chapter 17, verse 16. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Mm. Verse 18. As thou hast sent me into the world, Read. even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they also might be sancti sanctified through the truth. That we may be set apart. That's what that word sanctify means in this truth, brothers and sisters, that we may be hid in the day of judgment. Brothers and sisters, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of an angry God. It's time, brothers and sisters, if there was never a time in this world for our families to come together, for the churches to rally amongst each other. Notice that at this time, Satan's getting desperate. The Bible told you that the love of many shall wax cold at this time. Well, brothers and sisters, if you realize that it's, it's, it's infighting, well, you have to understand that it's the spirit that's bringing forth that infighting at the end time. You was fine every other time. But now all of a sudden, it's all these commotions. Brothers and sisters, we must realize it's only because these spirits know they have but a short time, brothers and sisters. We're in this world, but we can't be of this world. We have to take on the spirit of the Most High, transcend, and allow the spirit of the Almighty to show forth the love, the building of this nation, and the truth amongst neighbors. With that, I give all praise and honor to the Most High God, Ahia. In the name of his dear son, Yeshaya Hamashiach.
all praises. I appreciate you in the audience. I appreciate y'all in the viewing audience out there. Right? It was truly an honor to be before you on the Sabbath in the absence of our beloved elders. I do want to encourage you all, brothers and sisters, do all you can while you can. Right? You see the information on the screen to donate. Brothers and sisters, go to gatheringofchrist.org. Hit the donation tab. If you're in a remote area, brothers and sisters, if you can, show appreciation to this church and building. But I, I do challenge you, the brothers and sisters of the Gathering of Christ Church, make this year the best year. If this is, if this, if it, every day you have, to, you have to make it your best. If this is the last year, if we got 10 years, but work this year like it's your last. Love your church, support your elders, support this church, and don't let anything be a stumbling block to you. Okay, and as I stated, brothers and sisters, the Hebrew and Bible Academy, not this Sunday, but next Sunday, is going down. Week one, creation of the universe. We like to see you there in the academy. Go to historytimes.org. Brothers and sisters, enroll now. With that, I want to say blessings, shalom. We'll see you soon. And of course, we'll soon see Zion. Shalom, brothers and sisters. Yeah.